A week after journalist James Foley was beheaded by a member of the Islamic State, another American journalist has been released from captivity in Syria. Peter Theo Curtis landed at Logan International Airport in Boston on Tuesday, 22 months after he was first taken hostage by an Islamist group affiliated with Al-Qaeda. He thanked U.S. officials and expressed gratitude to his fellow Americans in a statement issued by a family spokeswoman. I have been so touched and moved beyond all words by the people who have come up to me today, said the 45-year-old. Militants officially released Curtis on Sunday, turning him over to the United Nations. President Obama expressed relief when being informed of Curtis's release, but had these strong words for those who continue to threaten the United States. But our message to anyone who harms our people is simple. America does not forget. Our reach is long. We are patient. Justice will be done. We have proved time and time again we will do what's necessary to capture those who harm Americans. The news of Curtis's release comes on the heels of the death of another American, Douglas McCain. A national security spokeswoman at the White House confirmed the death of the 33-year-old. Officials say he left his most recent home in San Diego to fight alongside terrorists. McCain's cousin, Kenyatta McCain, expressed shock when she heard the news. We're from Chicago. We grew up in Minnesota. He's not a terrorist. According to the FBI, McCain is one of roughly 100 people who have left the U.S. to join the conflict in Syria. Meanwhile, an estimated 30 U.S. journalists are still missing in that country. White House spokesman Eric Schultz, speaking for all Americans held there, said, We continue to hold in our thoughts and prayers the Americans who remain in captivity in Syria.